Welcome to Witch in the City. My name is Laura Dalligan and over the next few weeks we're going to be looking at witches' magical tools. Now, we're going to start this week by looking at the magical wand, but first let me explain a little bit about a witch's tools. Now, in all reality, we don't actually need to use any tools. All the energy and the power that we need to create a ritual or a magic spell is all contained here and within our own energy. However, it is really useful and pretty important when you're starting out to have a set of magical tools to help focus your intent. Even by holding the tools, they become imbued by your energy and then after a while of using them, they become magical objects all in their own right because we use them again and again and they become joined with our energy. You don't have to spend much money on your magical tools either and you don't have to get them all at once. There's quite a lot of stuff and I know fledglings of witchcraft kind of Myself, I remember very, very well that you just want to buy everything now and have everything that a witch has. But it takes time to gather a really lovely collection of magical tools. And we're starting with one today that you can actually make yourself. Now, you can buy magic wands from many stalls, many markets. They can often cost a little bit of money. Uh, this is a present, and it wasn't a too cheap one, I don't think, either. But it's lovely. It's a beautifully crafted wand with crystals, and just it's shaped absolutely gorgeously, and it's wonderful for healing. However, you know what? My favourite ones are the ones that I found myself, crafted myself, and feel really, really personal to me. Now, people who are all new to all this, witchy stuff. Maybe thinking, wait a minute, magic wands, Harry Potter, what's this all about? Well, you may not see sparks of lightning leave my wand, though you may. <laughs> um, it really isn't how you see it in the films. Obviously in the films, you say the magic words, you go like that, and pow, all the magic comes out the wand. But what the wand is for, it's for focusing our energy and it's for transporting our energy. And we, with, the, with the wand being it natural, being it made of wood, we combine our energy with the energy of the wood and the tree that we've got the, uh, the, the wand from. And we use it to define a point and send our energy there. Um, but a little bit first about a wand. Is it, what, what element does it belong to? Now you'll find that each of the elements has its own magical tool. Now, it's completely up to you. You may, you may go in a totally different direction. You may say, no, for me, a wand is this and, uh, and a thame is that. This is, my, this is the way I work, though it's completely up to you what you decide to do. For me, a wand relates to the element of fire, simply because that's how I learned it. And also, um, to make a fire, you use wood. And I always feel the energy of a wand is really warm and it's really comforting in that warm, warm way. Um, people also associate the element of air with a wand. So you might find people with differing opinions there. You'll even see tarot decks. Sometimes wands are related to fire. Most of the time they are, but in some decks they're related to air. Uh, the reasoning behind that is obviously a tree reaches high into the sky and is often seen blowing in the wind, so it can relate to air as well. But for my purposes, I'm going to use the connection of fire with a wand. Now, to get your own magical wand, all you need to do is take a walk into nature. It is my personal choice not to cut uh, a wand from a tree. There's plenty of branches that have fallen that you can pick up uh, without having to cut them from a tree. But Sometimes it is hard, sometimes you've been out and it's just all the wood's damp and it's rotting and it's so hard to find a nice piece of wood. You can ask permission from the spirit of the tree, back to the fairy um, show we did a few weeks ago, asking permission, is it, you know, asking the tree, the spirit of the tree, is it okay if I take this, take this wand? If you get a feeling in your gut, stomach of, no, it's not okay, don't take it. But if you kind of get a, yeah, okay, that's fine, go for it. But it is polite and etiquette to leave something in return. So to give something back to the tree if you're gonna take something. But none of my ones that I've made myself have been taken from a tree. They're all found on the floor and they've done me fine. So uh, you can re it's really nice to find something that's fallen by a tree, you can take it and then you can make it your own. Now, once you've decided you're gonna go and make a wand, which tree do you get the wood from? Well, 
it is your personal choice again. There's loads of books about the energies of trees and we're going to do a show on that very shortly about the different, you know, the personalities and traits and energies of different trees. Um, but just in, in brief, you can find them in my little spirally willow wand. Willow is a very feminine energy. It's very emotional. It's very psychic. Uh, it's perfect f for a wand, so you might want to find a willow wand because it's very good for enhancing your psychic abilities. It feels very soft and gen gentle. An oak wand, on the other hand, which I don't have with me, but an oak wand is very masculine. It's very strong. Maybe you want to, if, if you are a guy and you want to make a wand, an oak wand could be great for you. Um, and also if you want to bring in some strength and some power into your life, an oak wand could be wonderful also. Um, it, it's, it's in brief, uh, you've got the, the hazel ones, which are really related to the secrets, the mysteries. Um, very fairy related also. They've also got a gentle energy to them. Hawthorn is a very hard wood and hard to craft but it's also related to fairies. You've got so many different um, woods to choose from, we will go into that another week, but just go out for a walk in nature, see what feels right for you. Don't, you know, reading the books is great but you can't beat personal experience. So what you do is when you've got your piece of wood, you can sand it down, cut off the knobbly bits, you can make it really 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 smooth. If you would like to take the outside bark, the layer off, you can cut it off with a knife, obviously be careful with knives, um, and you can craft with a, a, some sandpaper, you can craft a really smooth finish. Now do this in a lovely time when you're going to not be disturbed by people. Make this your first step to bond with your new magical instrument. Uh, you could put some incense on, just take some time out to really work with it, feel the energy. You can decorate it in many, many different ways, from the very disco, <laughs> glitter, disco glitter, maybe not advised by all hardcore Wiccans to dedicate your one to disco glitter, but it just felt right. <laughs> um, or this is my uh, snaky one, it had, it had like a, a snake pattern around it when I um, picked it up and it felt almost Australian and you know that felt very fiery my fiery snaky wand and of course these aren't pieces of art they're just personal personal ones to me um, also this is the wand that's newest that uh, my boyfriend made for me uh, so it's in process at the moment it's beautiful and it's got some crystals um, stuck to it also it's, this is definitely a work in progress so there's all these different kinds of ones you can get which have really got a lot of character in the wood and you can if you're very good at woodcraft and carpentry then go for it um, or there's the more basic ones which I like and when you've actually got your wand you're going to want to consecrate it very simple to do you'll consecrate it in all the four elements you'll consecrate it in salt you'll consecrate it in water You'll consecrate it in air with the incense and you'll consecrate it over a candle, not in a candle, over a candle. We'll be showing you a full consecration ritual later on in the next coming weeks. So there, in a nutshell, is how to create your own magic wand, um, how to use it to focus your own energy, to cast a circle, to channel it into a spell, and the do's and the don'ts of getting it from a tree to a beautiful wand for you to use. Thanks for watching. In the coming weeks, we're going to be looking at atharmes, chalices, incense, brooms, the whole lot. Stay tuned, and if you are enjoying the show, don't forget to subscribe. See you shortly.